Good afternoon class. Welcome to Daily Current Affairs. I am not receiving the notification of schedules of sessions these days from UG app. Uh, might be some technical glitch, Kritika. Kindly inform the team. Good afternoon, ma'am. Sure. Good afternoon, Kritika. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, we will discuss about today's daily current affairs for the paper Hindu. Sure, Kritika, I inform the team that you are not getting notifications. That might be tech. Uh, so, you mean notification in the sense in your group or uh, whenever the class is on, is it the notification from application or from the group? Could you please specify on the issue so that I can inform the team? Notification from the application, okay, like the class is on, I think that is an issue, maybe a technical glitch, I will check with the team, no issues. Every time when it is scheduled, I used to receive ma'am. Okay, that was an issue. So, currently the team is not scheduling for you, they are directly getting into the class. So, it will be live. So, I will ask the team to schedule it in a prior way. So, that can help you, okay. So, that is not a technical team, I will inform the team, okay. I will inform the team to schedule it earlier so that you will receive a proper notification on when the class would be. No issue with that. Fine. So, coming to today's current affairs, yes. So, if you see today's current affairs, this first one goes with states must pay part of Manrega's wages, says Union Ministry. So, you need to know that Manrega, Manrega or MG Narega, which is your Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Development, Rural Employment Scheme, Employment Generation Scheme is a central sector scheme. That means, it is completely by the government. Central government will be paying you all the beneficiaries with their own money. Okay, but now for the first time this particular person who is Giriraj Singh, who is this man? He is our Ministry of Union Rural Development. Okay, so he said that even the states have to take the burden. Why this news has come? Currently in the budget you have seen that Manregas have also seen cut. So policy cut has been there. Budget allocation for Manrega has been reduced this year. So, in light of that, this particular Ministry of Union Rural Development has speculated that it is high time that state should also take responsibilities in filling up the gaps of Manrega. So, it is that converting, basically they are trying to convert the Manrega into central sponsored scheme where the state will also have its own take, stake in that, okay. So, that is about this article. Next, yeah, let us see. So, more of a politi political news today. Let us see if there are important articles, only that I will be discussing. There is also local news. Local news. Pay 1 lakh each to KSRTC pensioners, says Kerala High Court. So, what does this article say? So, whoever are the beneficiaries for KSRTC, which is your Kerala RTC, okay. So, Kerala State Road Transport Corporation. So, what they have currently given that they have to pay 1 lakh each for KSRTC pensioners, KSRTC, KSRTC's pensioners. Who gave this? High Court has given the statement. So, it has told that 1 lakh each of the first portion of the pensionary benefits within 45 days you have to settle. Okay. So, that is the issue. Court directs Kerala State Road Transport Corporation to restore the corpus and remit 10 percent of income into it. That means, to get pension benefits every month that you work, there will be certain deductions from that. So, it can be your PF deductions, gratuity. So, there are certain deductions when you get your salary. So, even if you are working in the IT sector, there will be certain kinds of deductions which will be further added to you in your account, in EPFO account. So, where you can get your amount drawn post your retirement. Okay. So, as a retirement benefit, pensions. 
So, for that what they have mentioned what high court has uh, guided is that for now you give 1 lakh uh, initial amount settlement for KSRTC people that too within a span of 45 days and the next thing is that you have to collect 10 percent of their income from I mean 10 percent of the income should be deducted to add it into their pensions. So, that is about this article. So, 45 days would be the first portion of pensionary benefit should be settled. So, general news. So, I told you that is also kind of governance part important. So, that is as part of your GS2 what high court has given orders. Next, Sarang team, Sarang team set to get bigger and better important for your GS3 SNT. I mean topic is for GS3 SNT. Okay. So, yeah what is this article says the dazzling display in air by the Sarang. So, where this issue is currently going on? Aero India. Aero India 2023 it is still going on. So, what happened here? So, they have displayed four of their helicopters. Aerobatic team, helicopter, aerobatic team of Indian Air Force is Sarang. So, one of such team is Sarang. They have displayed four, displayed four out of which they have different helicopters out of which four have been displayed and currently speculated that this will grow in a number in the coming future. Okay. Sarang is helicopter. Name is different that is why important. Can be asked for your prelims. Okay. Helicopter team of IAF. Indian Air Force. So, while only helicopter aerobatic team in the world is to set add one more other helicopter to the display, it is also working on adding five more maneuvers. So, it is trying to add more and more these helicopters that is all. Okay. So, that is about this article and normally Sarang performs with a full profile 20 to 15 maneuvers during the display of which some will be replaced by new five maneuvers as practice. So, currently four are being displaced, generally 12 to 15 will be displayed. So, not much important, but yeah, for your GS3, it is a topic which you need to know, okay. Next. So, this is US, US 1, F-35A, US helicopter, fighter jet basically. So, the US Air Forces, newest fighters, multi-role F-30A, F-35A, Lightning II, F-35A, Joint Strike Fighter made their debut in Aero India 2023. So, yesterday it has entered into our space to display their own state of art technologies. Okay. Yes. Next. IAF's acquisition of 114 fighter jets to be a part of major procurement plan. So, when we are reading about budget, I told that defense has been allocated more budget. So, even in the budget series, you would have seen that budget for defense is more, almost near to highest. Okay. So, in this budget, certain amount will be uh, completely uh, dedicated towards procurement of infrastructure. So, that can be from private. So, yesterday, there was also news speculating that currently procurements of defense is being focused on our domestic domestic products. So, domestic industries or domestic companies which are uh, showcasing interest or which are into the production of defense, make, defense uh, infrastructure that will be procured, that will be given priority compared to international infrastructure of defense. So, currently what is this is IAF's acquisition of 414 jets to be part of major procurement plan. So, there was around 300 procurement or uh, 300 devices that are going to be procured as already decided in which 114 is being a particular add up or it is a part of this particular procurement plan and totally around 300 I think just a moment around 300 300 or total that needs 500 jets see a mega 500 fighter aircraft acquisition process on annual of armored forces so out of 500 currently 114 were procured okay so next uh, sanctions 45 squadrons and so this is a squadron MiG-21 squadron, again a fighter jet. Okay. So, take time and the immediate effort to arrest the drawdown in strength says Air Marshal Narmadeshwar Tiwari. So, he said that currently we are taking, uh, so it has been already delayed. Basically, by 2021, 2021 was the decision they have taken for this procurement process and it is still ongoing. Despite few delays, they have again taken into 
existence now. So, 4, 4, 114 is done, rest all will be again procured. Okay. So, the delayed process, see, starting is the delayed process for the procurement of 114 fighter jets is set to take off soon along with three different indigenous flight fighter development programs. It will also result in mega 500 firecraft acquisition, not firecraft, fighter aircraft. So, Currently, 114 will be uh, in the near future, in the very soon, agreements have been done, so we will be procuring it and apart from that, we will be further focusing on 500 more acquisition process, okay. Next, so we are hopeful for the, so it says that we are hopeful for the acceptance of necessity for our F MRFA, see MRFA which is multiple role, multi-role fighter jets. So, for that, this will be sued for 3 to 4 months. So, within 3 to 4 months, 114 fighter jets will be procured and rest all will be again phased out within the span of 2025. So, 2025 is a, ta a target by which all this will be phased out, okay. Yes, next. So, currently IF is currently down to 31 fighter squadrons. Before, there used to be 42 fighter squadrons, but currently it is 31. Again, count is a bit important when you are stating in answers where there is a like if there is a question that why defense is giving more priority than the socio-economic policies of country in the latest budget, then you can tell that the defense, uh, defense technologies or infrastructure are being phased out because of the growing technology, it is outdated. So, in order to make ourselves, equip ourselves towards the latest technology, we need to spend more on our defense. And as a grow or as a developed country or towards the being developed country, our focus should be on our defense and our protection too, okay. So, yes. Next, and which is said to dwindle further as remaining three MiG-21 squadrons were phased out by 2025. So, what is the target for this squadron squadrons to? By 2025, another three MiG-21 will be coming into picture, okay. Next, by the end of the decade, phasing out of the other aircraft would also be begin. So, it will also be starting, okay. So, yeah, nothing more important. So, all like combat aircraft, they have given specifications that which particular generation will come when. No need to go that deep. So, you need to understand that they are into a major procurement process. Who? Our defense, especially IAF. Okay. Next. So, this is continuation of your Mandrega. They have given certain thing that excluding 57% of the workers because of the other based option for them to work. So, recent changes is that currently many of the people are not opting for your Manrega's uh, employment scheme, okay. So, here the thing is that budget has been decreased. See, going a step further, he said that I believe we should be able to go to parliament to amend the Manrega to change the contribution to 60s to 40. It is not the changes that has occurred. Currently, they are in the speculation that from being a central sector scheme, we have to slowly convert Manrega into central sponsored key scheme. So, what is central sector? What is central sponsored? Central sector scheme is the entire budget allocation for a particular scheme will be from central government, whereas central sponsored is a scheme which is distributed or which is having share between center and state, mostly in the 60s to 40 ratio for the all for all other states, For as, uh, except for the states like uh, northeastern states where there will be 90s to 10 ratio, 90 from center and 10 from the state. Okay. So, currently they are in a speculation or they are in the thought that why can't we change or the, the state government should put forward the, uh, their steps towards 60s to 40 ratio. That is what they are asking for change yet to be introduced, okay. So, yeah. So, currently 100 percent it is bared by center because it is a central sector scheme. So, 2023 budget has seen a cut of 33 percent in Manrega, in that particular light only they have asked all these things. So, when there is a 33 percent budget cut, then what happens? Then definitely they are asking for states to contribute for sustenance of this particular scheme, okay. Next. So, yeah, for the other based option to work, not only for the uh, workers job card, bank account seeded with other, but the account has to be connected with the National Payments Corporation of India. So, why these people are being excluded because of lack of mapping where their Aadhaar card has to be linked with National Payments Corporation of India. So, the bank accounts, general accounts have to be there because of that only rural people are unable to 
use their existing beneficiaries from Mandrega. Okay, next. So yeah, KYC, all these things they have mentioned, so not required. So because of this link up, almost 57% would be excluded. So that is about this article. Next article. Yes, he said to pronounce order today on whether a speaker under notice can disqualify legislature. So there are certain grey areas in constitution which can be filled by statutory laws. So whenever there is a requirement of any particular law or any particular uh, rule or any law regulations, then if it is not present in your constitution, that is a grey area. So we don't know. For example, cryptocurrencies. Till uh, the previous budget, it is not even under the consideration. So whether it is legal or whether it is illegal, whether it can be continued or whether it should be regulated, no one knows. So until unless there is no law, we cannot tell it is illegal or it is legal. So legality of a particular issue will not be decided. So now such a grey area is that whether a speaker, if he or she is under notice period or under notice, so when they are about to resign that particular position, then will they be eligible to disqualify legislature or not? So that is a question where it is not clearly mentioned in what constitution. Now who will be giving clarity on this? Judiciary. Because whenever the constitution does not give you proper interpretation, who is the interpreter of constitution? It is judiciary. So Supreme Court is the one who will interpret the existing one. So as per this article, it says that through five, five judge bench, headed by who? Chief Justice of India, Mr. D. Y. Chandrachur. He will be giving certain regulations or an inputs on what should be the regulations or what should be actual considerations whether speaker can be can disqualify a particular legislature or not when he or she is under notice. So that is about this, nothing more than that. So it is about anti-defection law. So what can be the qualifications or what can be the norms and regulations for anti-defection law? What is the schedule for anti-defection law? 10th schedule. Okay. Yes. Next. So this again can be in your governance part or in your judiciary GS2. Okay. Quality. Next. Mm. Yeah. About elections almost 80 percent have been for about have been recorded. So yeah. Next. SE on non committal on early hearing on collegium system. So there was a particular amendment bill for NGAC. What is NGAC? National Judicial Appointment Scheme. Appointments Commission. Okay. So there will be a particular commission. What was this particular bill is that? It stated that the execution, executive or the, the legislature or the parliament will have equal rights or equal part in choosing or in appointing a particular judicial member. So you have a collegium system which is completely dependent on whom? So judiciary people itself will decide on who should be appointed further into Supreme Court or High Court. So it is basically all this, all, yeah. Hmm. So in all these particular judiciary system, a collegium, collegium is a place or a collegium system is a place where they will appoint or they will choose a particular person's suitability and eligibility to be appointed as a judicial person, right. So a particular, this, a particular amendment was introduced which is giving powers to the execute, uh, sorry, executive or the legislature, basically to the executive on to choose a particular person, similar to the rights of collegium system. So there will be equal participation of executive in appointment. Why? To ensure transparency in the appointments. So definitely one thing there was speculated in recent uh, parliamentary uh, questions is that Mr. Riju, who is our union law ministry, yes Kriti, yes Kriti, yes Kriti Singh. So, he was asked that why there is no proper representation. So weaker sections are being underrepresented in judiciary. So it is not transparent way of election, right? It is not transparent way of appointment. So he, he got a question that why they are lacking a proper, uh, like why all socioeconomic backgrounds were not involved into appointments. So SC and ST or other weaker sections were underrepresented in total membership of judiciary. So that is being questioned. So here the positive aspect of this is that 
there is no reservations in appointing a person who is technical that means in a position or in a professional space like judiciary it's not always about the socio economical reservations it's about their efficiency so that is a positive aspect the negative aspect is that when they are in the majority place when the people are in the influential place who the already uh, like outcasted people can be your um, people who are already well off so if they are in high or influential position then they are trying to get only the, their people into collegium or in, their people into appointments not other socio economic communities okay so these both are different constraints so can be positive can be negative so to to compromise that or to neutralize that particular issue executives have come with this particular so legislatures have come with this particular commission where they'll have equal priority but it was been struck down by judiciary stating that judiciary's independence is also a basic structure so you cannot involve yes so you cannot involve into our appointments so that is what they have mentioned but what happened here now there was an appeal to supreme court on why can't we have this ngac so why can't the see here so a petition has sought the revival of national judicial appointments commission which briefly gave the government an equal role along with the judiciary so the government people will also have the equal role with the judiciary in what in appointment of judges that is about this article nothing more than that so he has told that it's not an urgent like he has mentioned that let me see so let us decide on whether to debate or discuss about this particular topic or not so as of now no tomorrow or any other class we can get a bit detailed version of it okay so far he has told that mr chandrashud has told that yes ma'am legislatures are legislative legislators legislative are the people legislatures sorry legislators are the people legislative is the body that's all body comprising of all legislatures or you are legislative that's all who legislates who create the laws that's all executive is the one who implements who implements so basically we have convergence here legislatures so who are framing laws or some of the legislatures have this twin responsibility which is executives which is implementary all these ministries okay yes next yes so now no age bar to register for cadaver organ transplant okay cadaver which is your uh, in your mortuary you will have dissections right so for that cadaver a body body bone basically so now there is no age restriction earlier there used to be that above 65 years so a person aged above 65 years will not be eligible for organ transplant but now that has been removed so even if a person who is willing to uh, donate or for organ transplant when they are living and then when they are upon death we can have this organs transplanting so a person who is Below, so beyond the age of 65 is also eligible now for organ transplantation so that is about this article everything is mentioned about that only so the government yeah the union health ministry does away with the clause of national organ and tissue transplant organization guidelines such a patient should be less than 65 at the time of registration so at the time of registration he should not be less than 65 that was earlier clause now they have done away so even if a person is aging 70 and going like i am interested to donate my organs then yes you have to accept even if he is 90 or she is 90 you have to accept next so in a major tweak to the organ donation policy union health ministry on tuesday clause that people would be above age will also be permitted for organ transplantation the government has decided to do away with the ceiling indeed in the need of organ donation so if they are See, when they are okay to donate, then why should have such a why should we have such an obstruction? That is what Union Health Ministry have felt. The government has decided to do away the clause in what National Organ Tissue Transplantation Organization, as it violates the right to life. And the source added. So, in what basis they have removed right to life? Article twenty one. So, through Article twenty one, it has told that they have told that. this particular organ transplantation should not be restricted based on age because it is their right to life if they are interested up upon that they can donate their organ organs so organ transplantation is cannot be removed 
So he has also mentioned that one nation, one policy for organ donation and transplantation. We are introducing this particular chapter in school curriculum regarding the organ donation awareness for the students too. So as part of our NEP policy, now organ transplantation, organ donation will also be created, will also be educated. Yes, yes, Article 21, Prithi. So there they have mentioned that. So through this particular uh, education policy, we will make aware, we will create awareness in students for developing organ or to have a positive will for organ donation or transplantation. Yes. Next, try tells telecom firms to crack down on S SMS spammers. So, every other day we get a call. So, almost everyone who have mobile phones will get some kind of spam calls, spam messages. Some will send SMS or some would send uh, some OTPs, some hyperlinks where you have to tap and it will go redirect to some other web page. Such SMS tracking, for that there are certain regulations which has been given by telecom that if a particular uh, text message is sent as a spam, then it should be notified that it is a spam. So we get that spam message, you know, it cannot be sent through regular numbers. It should be sent that which acknowledges the user, acknowledges the customer that it is a spam number. So that is why whenever we see, we get that red mark or something in phone stating that it is a spam. So even for the text also, we get that it is a spam, spam text, okay. So whoever are the people that are violating this, they are going to track down. So that is what this article says. So we will see the article. The Telecom Regulatory Authority of India asked the telecom operators to crack down spammers that were slipping past protections introduced this year. So in the recent year itself that has been noticed. So earlier we used to get calls, even now we get calls from unknown numbers. So they are not mentioned as spam, only few numbers whenever we receive we get a red alert stating that this is a spam number or a company number. So it will uh, make me aware or make people aware that yes this is spam number, no need to lift the call until unless it is required from my end. At the same time, there are certain people who will use some other personal numbers which are not being mentioned as a company number or a private number, okay. So by seeing that, we will assume that there are some other unknown person who is calling us. So we don't know whether that is a company call or not. Such should not be actually done. That is what the regulations given by TRI recently, in 2021, I guess. In 2018, they have given, they have come up with this particular process and this implementation was started in 2021 itself. So recently only started, important, so as part of your data protection, data privacy and all. So they have mentioned all those things. So currently they have told that whoever are not following this particular protection, uh, protection rules given by TRI, they will be tracked down, okay, yes. So that is about this article and that two orders were passed from Telecom Commercial Communication Customer Preference Regulations 2018 and Telecom Regulation Authority of Act, TRI Act. 2018, so sorry, on 1997. With these two acts, they have regulated this particular concern. That is why before we used to not get that many spam, but now even if we are getting spam numbers, we used to not get identified. So we are we are unable to identify whether it is a spam number or some unknown number. But now it is almost clear, irrespective of some glitches. So that glitches will also be re reduced. That is about this article. So this is important for your uh, SNT again. Data protection, okay. Next, also governance, this is for your social justice to society and governance to, governance to. Next, 12 cheetahs from South Africa likely to reach India today, environment. So as from yesterday we were discussing about this article where 12 cheetahs from South Africa will be sent to here and there is an agreement made. So every year 10 to 12 will be coming to India. So that is being mentioned here from Namibian, from Namibian animals, okay. So from Namibia we are getting this. So the agreement with the South African government is to send 10 to 12 cheetahs every year potentially for the next decade. So till the next decade we have agreement with South Africa that every other year, so every year we will be getting 10 to 12 cheetahs. So as of now they are going to land today into India, okay. So where they are going to be placed? In Madhya Pradesh, Kuno National Park. Okay, so that is about this article. And who is the ministry that is dealing with this? Ministry of Union Environment Ministry or Ministry of Union Environment. Okay, fine. Minister, so he is doing, he is dealing with it. Next. India accounts for 52 percent of the world's new leprosy patients. Health, SNT, governance. 
social justice. This is GS3, GS3 only, GS2, both. Okay, fine. So, what is this article about? Ma'am, you discussed this topic yesterday. Yes, I have discussed about this. Next. So, here, fifth, about this article I have discussed. Okay, fine. Next, 52 percent of the world leprosy patients. So, what is the current data say? Yes, MP Kuno National Park. Yes. So, with a renewed focus on tackling leprosy, the Union Health Minister have devised a particular strategic roadmap for zero cases of infection by 2030. So, our focus, major focus is to eliminate leprosy by 2030, but what is the current account? India account for more than 52 percent, so almost half of the cases that is being, not half, more than half of the cases that is being repeated for the leprosy is from India alone, okay. So, here despite being, what is our target? Zero cases, infection by 2030 is our target for what? Leprosy. Next. So, despite India being declared a leper, leprosy eliminated in 2005, the country still accounts for half of the world's new leprosy patients, says who? Union Health Minister Manshuk Mandavia in a written message to the nation's strategic plan and roadmap for leprosy 23-27. Very important. So, you need to know health burden of our country and our targets. So, in the 23-27 roadmap for what? National strategic plan and roadmap for leprosy 23-27. So, next five years we will be having this roadmap out of which they have mentioned the next four years. Out of this they have mentioned that despite India being announced as a leprosy eliminated in 2005, yet 52 percent of the world cases are being reported in India. Okay. So, yeah. That is about this. Then... So, leprosy is a chronic bacterial infection. So, you need to know what is leprosy? Bacterial infection. So, it is a bacterial infection, chronic, which affects skin, nerves, lungs and eyes. Okay. So, leprosy. Next. Not virus, bacterial infection. Kriti, it is a bacterial infection. Okay. Next. So, you need to know, whenever we are discussing about a particular disease, you need to know whether, uh, what is the uh, causing agent. Okay. And what is a vector? How it is being spread? So, yeah, with the COVID pandemic 2020, the case detection has dropped by. So, our post COVID 2020 or COVID 19, what happened? The cases detection has been reduced by 43 percent. In 2021, it was 30, 34 percent. In 21, 22, in comparison to pre COVID of 2019, 2020. So, cases that are being reported has been reduced. So, you defer, but do you have a proper database on who or, or what is the disease burden currently? Do you know? No. So, proper database is not there. That is why that is again another issue. So, the annual case detection rate has been halved from 8.13 cases per lakh. So, what is the current detection rate? 8.13. 8.13 cases per lakh is the detection rate ma'am I want to know about Marburg. Yes, I remember Kriti, yesterday I told that I will be discussing it today. So, if time permits we can discuss it today. I have already told you the website which is of importance to WHO website we can go and uh, see about this Marburg. So, I will tell you, okay, fine. So, 4.56 cases in 2021, in 2021 and 22 it has settled to 5.2 cases, 5.52 cases per lakh. So, in, as of the latest data what is it? 5.52 per 1 lakh cases. So, this is the case of previous year and the current 21-22 is 5.52 lakhs. Okay. So, yeah, the agent of elimination is a subnational level is still unfinished. So, all these are the statements given. So, we need to know what I have given you. Okay. Next. I think day before yesterday, I think I told one news where China has visited to Iran and met President Iran of who is named Xi, Xi Jinping. So, Xi Jinping sorry, visit to Iran and Rises is the person of Iran president. Okay. So, Xi met Rises and told that we are going to have an everlasting friendship, all weather friendship with Iran. Now, why this particular thing has come? In the backdrop of USA's common enemy. Enemy, enemy, both are friends. So, now USA is a common enemy for who? For Iran and China. Enemy in the sense they are having certain kinds of 
issues with their foreign policies with USA. China is growing its footprint, at the same time it is threatening the world now. So, here what is the issue with Iran with US? Iran's nuclear program. So, I told that their nuclear program that started enriching the Ukraine, sorry, Ukraine, and they started using it for weaponry instead of civilian uh, electricity generation through nuclear power. So, instead of using nuclear energy for power generation, they have started enriching uranium reserves and they had uh, allegations that they are using it for weaponry. Okay, that is when issues have come with Iran with US. So, now what happened? China is trying to have a proper ties with Iran. So, that is what Iran is under strict US sanctions because of its nuclear program. So, US sanctions have been given, have been levied on Iran. So, that is about this article, nothing more than that. Next. Government likely to place reverse charging of GST on scrap before GST council, on scrap before GST council. So, what is the article? The center will consider the then, uh, then place industries demand to shift GST levy on purchase of scrap metal to a reverse charge mechanism before the GST council. On why in the view of operational difficulties in legal disputes arising from non-compliance by information sector scrap dealers who often fail to deposit tax collected from buyers. So, where it is important? GST, economy, taxations. GST. So, here what is the issue? Ma'am, China ties with Iran for comprehensive strategic partnership. Yes, that I have discussed yesterday. I mean, day before yesterday, I guess. So, China is having a comprehensive strategic partnership with Iran. So, that is what they have uh, showcased earlier. So, now in same part, they are having communications with Iran. Now, Iran is going to China. Earlier China was still, now Iran is going to Iran. Okay. Next. So, what is this article about? They are encouraging, the government is encouraging towards having reverse scraping or reverse G, reverse charging of GST. What is this reverse charging? Suppose, now if you are going to hotel, hotel has taxation of GST, right? Who are paying this GST actually? Actually, the uh, particular res restaurant has to pay GST to government. But who is paying? Ultimately, it is being levied on customers. So, customer is paying to the restaurant and restaurant is paying to government. Here, Reverse scraping is where the customer itself pay to government directly on GST. So, there will be no middle person that is called reverse, reverse charging. So, now that particular reverse charging is being introduced in what? In scrap materials where the non-compliance is more from informal sector. So, this is scrap material business and all is an informal sector where huge manpower is being used, right? So, in this particular arena, they are unable to track the exact GST's outcomes. So, GST collections is being difficult because of huge non-compliance from scrap industry. So, that is why what uh, currently government is coming up is with, they are trying to levy direct or reverse charging of GST where the particular customer who is going to buy it, they will be paying GST directly to government. Whenever you procure a particular scrap material, you have to pay amount to direct government itself similar to your income tax, okay, fine. So, a reverse charge mechanism enables buyer to directly pay the GST dues for their inputs instead of depending on sellers to remit the taxes and then avoid tax credits. So, when I pay taxation to GST, being a particular purchase, being a particular buyer, I will pay directly to the government so that the non-complaints from the seller end will reduce, right? At the same time, I will get my tax benefits, tax credits will be increased for me. So, that is your reverse charging, yes. Next. Government slashes levy on crude ATF and diesel. So, I have told that windfall taxation, yesterday we have read one particular article. So, what is windfall pr profit? What is windfall profit? Online anyone? What is a windfall profit and what are windfall profit? Taxation. Mm. If they are? Who will tax on the profit? Online students, anyone? Uh, tell me what is windfall taxation? 
windfall profit taxation okay i'll revise it i don't get any comment right now fine fine i'll tell you you can google it and tell me too so what is windfall profit and what is windfall profit taxation okay so yeah what is windfall so any kind of profit that a particular organization here they are mostly restricted towards oil companies so any profit that is being made because of the exogenous events or exogenous incidents anything that is not under the ambient of that particular company and not but not on but not because of because of company's decisions or company's business plan so what is a windfall, windfall profit is it is the benefits or the profits that have been acquired by a particular company not because of their business strategies or plans but because of some external events that can be any foreign market uh, issues or any demand supply chain changes or any supply management change anything so it can be your demand side or supply side whatever the issues may be any disruptions may be because of which a particular uh, particular sector is being benefited so uh, the taxation that, so that is called your windfall profits and the taxation that is being levied on this windfall profits is your windfall taxation okay so here this taxation so this windfall profit can be on and off or can be prolonged that is another one so currently what is the issue is that not issue basically government has reduced this windfall profits on crude oil petroleum or any oil based products okay so that is what this article says india has cut his cut its windfall tax on crude oil exports of aviation turbine fuel atf so on atf crude oil and diesel so it has been reduced so currently the windfall tax on crude was cut to 1000 uh, 4350 which is 52.60 per ton per ton 1000 kg if i am uh, not wrong it is 1000 kg so per ton the windfall taxation used to be 4350 rupees indian currency or 52.60 dollars but uh, that was currently which is being reduced and earlier it used to be 5050 rupees so earlier per ton 5050 rupees per ton now it is around per ton now it is around 4300 and something per ton so what it has reduced so central, the central government has reduced this windfall taxation okay that is about this article so windfall taxes had been weighing on profits of indian refineries with firms such as so what are the firms that are being involved rl vedanta oil india mangalore refinery petrol chemicals etc okay so all these countries all these companies will be benefited because of reduction in windfall taxation a sudden and significant increase in profits we call them as windfall taxation no a sudden and significant increase in profits is called windfall profits which is not because of their business strategies but because of the external events and taxation on this particular windfall profits is your windfall taxation so taxing by the indian government or by the government of a country on this particular profits is your windfall taxation okay fine you are closely correct no problem so yeah that is about this article government exports shrank 3.45% in january to 1 I mean, billion so near to 1 billion 1 billion 1.43 billion data says so government exports what are different garments any any kinds of garments clothing anything so government exports shrank 3.45% in january to 1 billion al almost near to 1.5 billion compared with the year earlier which was 1.5 so you need to calculate that from 1.5 billion to 1.4 billion dollars it has shrank so nearly about 3.45% has been shrank okay so that is about article nothing more than this is there just a thing that you need to know that's all why it has been reduced the demand is slightly better compared with the last three months in the european market so i haven't mentioned so yeah that's all there is anything i will discuss else we can go with your 
Marburg virus. Yes. So that is about this article. So today most articles are politically related. So if you want you can go, re, uh, go research about, I mean one article was mentioned about Musharraf and his contributions to India and Pakistan. Like what is his role in India, Pakistan, especially in your Jammu and Kashmir. So if you want you can refer that particular article. And uh, yeah, so we will see about Marburg virus, okay. Just a moment. Fine. It is not mentioned. Yeah. Marburg virus. So, Marburg virus is a virus which is again caused by similar to your Ebola, okay. So, it is the one which is causing your Ebola virus. So, this is about Ebola, I do not want to discuss about Ebola, Marburg I wanted to go to, yes. So, what is Marburg? Marburg disease. Okay, virus disease. So with the name you can understand that this is a viral infection. Virus, virus is being, virus Marburg is causing this particular disease. So formally known as, so earlier it used to be known as Marburg hemorrhographic fever is a severe and most fatal illness in humans. So it is a severe one and so till then your Hindu paper is covered and this particular uh, virus is mentioned one of your, in one of your news recently and what is the news that also I will show you then we will go to this, okay. So, a Marburg virus outbreaks confirmed by WHO, so symptoms, treatment, all you need to know has been mentioned here. So, they have confirmed, confirmed that, who confirmed? WHO has confirmed that first ever outbreak of Marburg virus in equatorial Guinea, saying the Ebola related virus is responsible for the at least 9 deaths in the country. So, in Guinea, equatorial Guinea, currently this, Ebola, this particular Marburg virus is pictured. So, that has been confirmed by who? WHO. So, now we will see what is this virus about. The virus causes severe hemorrhographic fever. So, hemorrho that means your blood related to. So, hemorrhographic fever, the average MVD cases fatality is around 50 percent. That means 50 percent. So, whoever are the people being affected, only 50 percent chances for the particular person to be alive. Other 50 percent he might die, he or she might die. So, the case fatality rates have been varied from 24 percent to 84 percent in the past outbreaks depending on the virus strain and the case management. So, now what you need to know here is early supportive care is with rehydration that means your, your body will be getting dehydrated because of this virus. So, rehydration is through saline or something and symptomatic treatment improves the survival. There is yet to be no licensed treatment being provided to neutralize the virus, but a range of blood products, immune therapies, drug therapies are being currently used. So, no proper uh, identification or no proper medication is there for this particular Marburg virus disease, but yet what is the possibilities that they will be doing? Some kind of blood uh, transactions or blood transfusion or any kind of um, what we can say rehydration procedure will make the part particular person survive, okay. So, yeah. So, how it is being transmitted? Rosetosis aegypticus is, ag, sorry, aegypticus is fruit bats of the, this particular family, Tyrophoridilae, so are considered to be the host of this particular marble. So, on fruits you will be seeing this particular uh, flies, right, fruit flies. So, for that is a host, yes, that is a host for Marburg virus and the Marburg virus is transmitted to people from fruit bats spreads among humans, human to human transmission. So, it is a communicable disease from human to human transmission will also be there among humans and the community engagement is a successful key. So, again 
community engagement in the sense what? If that particular is person, that particular person is affected by this arba, he must be alienated or he must be kept in a separate ward. Okay. Similar to your COVID. Okay. Next. So Marburg is a causative agent of Marburg virus disease. So this is a virus which is being caused, and the same virus is also responsible for Ebola fever. Ebola. Ebola disease is also same virus. So a disease with a case of fatality ratio up to 88 percent so on average I have mentioned 50 but till 24 percent to 88 percent can be based on the variant that it is being affected. So can be much lower with good patient care and this virus is initially detected in 1967 all these details not required. So both Marburg and Ebola virus are both the members of Filoviridae uh, family. So for this particular family it is also related that is why I told you both are responsible for Ebola, Ebola and also this particular disease okay. So both are from same family. Next they caused a different the, uh, by different viruses two diseases are clinically, clinically similar. So how it is being transmitted important all these breakouts or the place of origins not required by residues bat colonies basically your fruit flies scientific name of your fruit fly. Marble spreads through human to human transmission via direct contact through broken skin or mucous membranes. So again through mucous membranes or direct contact any other way it will be being spread from one human to other human. So with the blood secretions organs or other bodily fluids can be through saliva too or can be through sweat too or can be through inhalation too ok. So any other way it, it will be being spread. So, with the surfaces and materials, bedding, clothing contaminated with these fuels. So, even if they are sleeping, you cannot sleep next to them. Because some of the way sweat is being touched to or any liquids, bodily liquids that is being touched to other body, other person will be transmitted easily. So, healthcare workers all these need not required. See, burial ceremonies that involve direct contact with the body of the disease can also contribute. So, even after death, Giving that body to their loved ones is also impossible that you need to understand. Similar to your COVID-19, even the dead patient used to transmit this particular COVID. So they, are, they were not giving even the bodies of those people who, who died during COVID-19 because even the dead body can transmit virus. So in the same way, Marburg is also same thing. So what are the symptoms and what is the incubation period? So what is the incubation period? The period which, which a particular person will showcase the symptoms. Have same treatment. Yes, we will go with the treatment as well. When they are from the same family, the way they are approaching or the way they behave will also be the same. Okay. So definitely their way of treatment and diagnosis will also be same thing. We will see. See treatment and vaccinations is there. So what is this virus in animals? What is the prevention and control? Everything is mentioned here. Okay. So if you want, you can further refer this website. Whenever we are discussing about a particular disease, I will definitely go for WHO website. Even if I want to refer, I will be going to this website only. So this is a standard source. And apart from this, if you want anything, if it is related to India, then we can go to our Indian websites. Okay, Ministry of Health website. Next. So yeah, incubation period interval from infection to the onset of symptoms. How much is the incubation period? 2 to 21 days. So within that span, symptoms will be out and illness was caused by Marburg begins with abruptly with high fever, severe headache and severe malaise. So yes, next. So muscle aches, body pain, so you have body pains, you have severe fever, then you have headache and malaise. So severe watery diarrhea, abdominal pain, so basic symptoms, can I say that these are the basic symptoms ex except for high fever, high fever is also basic symptom but whenever you get such diseases, just a moment, yes. So basically what happens here? Any, any kinds of issue like all these are like basic symptoms, your body pains will be there, muscle aches will be there, uh, headache will be there, high fever will be there and your severe malaise. So many instances basically the discomfort, so some kind of issue, discomfort or fatigue, you can tell. So yeah, next. So diarrhea can persist for a week and appearance of patients of this phase has been described as showing ghost like brown features, deep set eyes. So when you see this person, I will also show the image how this Marburg affected people would be there. Let us see if there are any images. 
So, all these bats, fruit flies, this marabug, I have told that fruit bat, no? So, these bats are also reason for spreading. So, they are host, host of marburg virus. So, let me go to virus disease. I don't have proper images, so that will be the level of impact, so I don't want to show it, it's kind of rough, people are already hiding their faces, fine. So yeah, you will have rashes on your body, high fever, that is when you identify this Merbach virus, okay. So yeah, pulmonary edema, so all these are related to lungs, then glial nodule encephalitis so for your brain it will be damaged again then all these are diarrhea all these are the common issues with this virus lymph nodes and spleen nedula all these are like what we can say pancreatic inflation so each one organ will be affected that is why your survival rates are being less so 88 percent people will be fatal because of this particular disease that shows the level of impact of this particular disease okay so yeah let me go to the website again Mm. Okay. So, many patients develop this particular manifestations within 5 to 7 days, ghost like behavior, so eyes will be swollen like red, then expressionless faces extremely lethargic, so completely dried out, completely with no energy because dehydration will be there, high fever will be there, all these are symptoms. Next, blood loss will be there for the death, during death or during that particular time, severe blood loss will also be there. Diagnosis, it, it can be difficult to clear clinically diagnose this MVD from other infections such as malaria, typhoid, fever, shigaras, meningitis, sorry, meningitis, meningitis and other viral hemographic fevers. So, compared to other, it is also because, it, because of its similarity with the symptoms. So, it is very difficult to identify and diagnostic methods, ELISA, ELISA diagnostic method commonly used for malaria too, so ELISA, then antigen capture detection tests, then serum neutralization test. RT-PCR, reverse transcriptose polymerase chain reaction. So, RT-PCR can be done, electron microscopy, virus isolation by cell culture. So, through laboratory, blood samples will be connected through lab, through RT-PCR, through ELISA and other detection tests. So, with that, you can find out how, uh, whether you are affected by Marburg virus or not. Treatment and vaccines, currently no vaccines or antiviral treatments approved for M MBD and supportive care is rehydration and other which I have already mentioned and monoclonal antibiotics and development and antivirals etc. like remdesivir which was used for COVID-19 too. So, remdesivir and favipirir are have been used for clinical studies for the Ebola virus that could be tested for MVD and under compassionate and expanded access. So, whenever they are still under testing process that you need to understand, okay. So, they are still under testing and currently this particular virus can be treated with the same lines with Ebola. So, here they have given clarity that by testing similar or by giving treatment similar to Ebola virus, we can treat this particular Marburg virus disease, okay. Yeah, so that is about this article, nothing more than that. So, all this not required. So, till here we can stop regarding Marburg. More than this, if you want to know, you can see this risk reduction techniques, community wise what should be the prevention or control methods. So, reducing risk of bat to human transmission. So, keep your environment, keep your community clean. Bat should not be entered. Fruit bats. Next, reducing the risk of human to human transmission in the country. So, in the community. So, when a particular person has been attacked with Marburg, isolating him and giving proper treatment. You should not be leaving the treatment. Communities affected by Marburg should make efforts to re, uh, this people to be informed. So, everything should be communicated. No fake news. All this should be or like common common uh, things for which we have done with COVID-19 too. So, I do not need to explain all this. So, yeah, that is all. So, I think it is clear for you, Kriti. So, rest of students, if you have any doubts, you can let me know as we can wind up the class, okay. I hope that is clear. You, online, chocolate, us, clear. Other students, please let me know if you have any issue, else we can wind up the session. 
కృతిక సింధు ధనరెడ్డి కృతి సింగ్ ఎనీ అదర్ పీపుల్ ఎస్ మ్యామ్ క్లియర్ గ్రేట్ గ్రేట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ ద సెషన్ విల్ మీట్ టుమారో గేమ్ ఓకే